All right, welcome Richfield High School. This is a, a the second of multiple series of guest speakers to talk to us to give them their world uh, real world experience. Um, so I want to introduce you uh, to Nelson Soto, a 2012 graduate of Richfield High School. Nelson. Hi guys, my name is Nelson. Um, I graduated like he said uh, back in 2012 from the high school. It seems like a long time ago, but. So it was only eight years ago. So uh, a little bit about me, I'm a civil engineer. Uh, I studied at the University of Minnesota here in the Twin Cities. Uh, I started civil engineering, but now work in construction as a project engineer. Um, I began my career in civil engineering uh, at an engineering firm designing uh, anything from roads and residential neighborhoods, utilities, uh, stormwater management. Um, Right now, as I said, I work as a project engineer in construction uh, for a company called Doran Construction in Blooming, based out of Bloomington. Uh, actually, funny enough, today, uh, now I'm working on a project in Richfield. Uh, we're building a 132-unit apartment complex out of uh, Penn Avenue and 62. So the Lawns parking lot that you guys may have seen some construction, uh, that's what I'm working on right now. So I guess we'll open up for questions now, I guess. Awesome, great. You're, not only are you from Richfield, but you're, you're contributing to Richfield, that's great. Um, <laughs> my, I guess the first question is, how did you decide, or where, where, how did you become an actual civil engineer? What made you decide? Uh, it's a little bit of a different path than like just a straight path. So uh, growing up, I decided to pursue architecture. Uh, growing up, I, one of my uncles was an architect, and I would see his like 3D models and scale models of uh, buildings, and I thought it was really interesting, so I decided to go into architecture, and that's a pretty much since I was since I can remember. So, uh, ever, probably since I was like six, I knew I wanted to be an architect, and through high school, I wanted to be an architect, and I got to college, and. I decided after the first semester of classes that architecture just wasn't for me. Uh, so then I went into, you know, I started looking at different options that I had. Uh, and I decided the best, the best path for me was civil engineering. I was just really interested in the built environment. So, and I guess that's the reason that I also liked architecture. So just the built environment, anything from construction to architecture to even like real estate management and all these things. So, but for me, I decided to go into uh, civil, engin uh, civil engineering. Uh, my first semester, also the first two weeks, I found a lot of people that were pretty similar to me in a sense that they were also uh, Latinos looking at uh, engineering careers, not just civil engineering, but any other engineering. Uh, I joined this group called Society of Hispanic Professional Engineers. And that sort of convinced me to go into uh, to engineering specifically instead of this other uh, role or careers I would have pursued that relate to uh, you know the built environment construction. Uh, so excellent. So you were talking a little bit about college. You kind of went away from architecture to to, to engineering. What was college like? Was that difficult? Um, how would you get through it? it? I would say it was difficult. Uh, it just really depends what you make of it. Uh, it's a lot different from high school, I would say. Um, I think in college you, you are responsible for yourself. I mean, in high school as well, but in college it's just a different level, you know? So you have to, uh, I think you have to hold yourself accountable to, to do well. Uh, there was a lot of times for me uh, that I, you know, I, I didn't know if I was studying enough or not studying uh, or studying too much. Uh, I think college is a little bit too difficult or it can be difficult if you make it difficult, but it can be easy if you make it easy and study and prepare. Uh, there's a lot of uh, self, or you have to manage your time a lot. Uh, there's not many 
people that can hold you accountable besides yourself. So. Excellent. Another, another student asked, which one specifically did you like better, college or high school? I would say college. Uh, there's a lot of, uh, there's many, I mean, with both you had different experiences, right? Uh, specifically for me, I would say in high school, one of the best things that I like was sports. <laughs> and that's something you don't really get to do in college unless you're, you can, but it's not at the same competitive level. Uh, for me, uh, I like college a little more because there was a lot of more things that I could do um, that were new to me. Uh, can meet a lot of new, newer or new people. Um, it's just a different experience. You know, you can join all these groups from uh, anything that you like. Uh, it could be uh, intramural sports or for me, for example, uh, engineering group. Uh, you can find also people that you really can assimilate to. So say you like uh, playing chess, well, you'll definitely find a chess club. So there's all these things that are, there's more freedom. So you can choose what you want to do uh, and you're not limited to anything. If you don't find, for example, a club that you, that you are looking for, you can start your own club. Uh, I know at the University of Minnesota, for example, there was a, or there was rumors, I never found this club, but there was a six foot four club or something like that. So it was a tall people's club. And that's something that they did not find, but it's kind of, it's kind of cool. That's great. I wonder if they have any five foot six uh, bald club. I, I I think I'd be a good uh, representative in that. Um, a few people I can join. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, actually, this leads to the next question is that you have all these options. What about now? Like, what do you do in your, your, your free time? Or actually, do you have free time? Uh, in my free time? Uh, well, right now, so just to put it into perspective, uh, my work day is pretty much between 7 a.m. to 4 p.m., give or take. Uh, sometimes it can be longer. Uh, Many Fridays is, I cut it shorter. Uh, right now with coronavirus, most people are working from home, myself included, uh, half the time. So I split my time between the work side and some days I'm at home working from home. Uh, in my free time, I like to bike, road bike, uh, longer bike trips. I uh, I, I mean, besides that, I, I just like to be active. So in my free time, uh, right now, I just bought a house a couple months ago. So my free time involves tearing walls down, painting, um, sanding, all these things. So I'm remodeling my house. It's, it's a lot of work. That's my free, that's where my free time is going to right now. Um, but also, uh, I guess before the pandemic, it's, a lot of my free time also involved volunteering for this uh, Society of Hispanic Professional Engineers organization. So we would do a lot of events uh, with other professionals and other other professionals uh, in STEM. So science, technology, engineering, math. Um, a lot of these were networking events uh, and happy hours. Um, panel, we also did a lot of uh, panel uh, discussions with uh, anywhere from, you know, students to uh, college students to uh, presidents of companies, uh, just to develop our, or the group's um, influence in the Twin Cities and, you know, establish more, uh, more of a presence, so, yep. Excellent, excellent. Um, Follow-up question here. Our, our students here, we, we 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 pride ourselves in our empathy, and we just want to know, hey, Nelson, how how are you doing? How are you doing? The COVID and everything. I think I'm doing well. I was pretty fortunate that my industry was not really impacted through COVID, uh, or it was impacted, but not to an extent that some other uh, industries were. Uh, I'd say I'm pretty good. It's I think life is good and 
you know, as long as you're cautious about coronavirus, it's can be good. So good. We're we're happy that you're doing well. So, um, let's go back to to high school. What were your favorite classes, or which class did you wish Richfield had that would help you with your civil engineering? Uh, my favorite classes, I would say, was, I guess, all the science classes uh, and math, science, math, and all the technology classes. I don't know if it's still there, but all the back wing, so uh, technology, technology classes, so anywhere from uh, metals, carpentry, I think it was one of them. Uh, the foods classes was also some of my favorite ones. Uh, actually, with foods, I, I think I took Foods one and foods two, if that's still called the same. Um, but I think that's one of the the class. Those two classes really helped me with my uh, eating habits. You know, I think I cook a lot and I cook a lot of good meals, healthy meals. So, um, in that same wing, actually, uh, I took a lot of uh, technology technology classes with a uh, Mr. Kitsman. I don't know if he's still there, but uh, I think I took all of his classes since I was a freshman all the way through graduation. So I think, yeah, I took uh, architecture classes, I think two of those. There might've been a one civil engineering class too, one or two. I definitely remember one of the classes. Uh, and I remember I, I was in class and I'm like, why, why, does, why would anyone wanna do this? <laughs> and now here I am doing it. Uh, so, and one of the things, one of the classes that I wish would have been there when I was there, um, maybe like a software coding class. Uh, I don't remember if we had anything related to it, but I think like a coding class would have been a good, um, a good class to have. Uh, I know I'm not a software engineer, but in my field, uh, there's a lot of people that use coding for other things um, to help in everyday everyday work life. So, excellent. Well, that's a that's a shameless plug for me. I actually teach the coding here. So, what uh, language? Yeah, what language did you have to learn in college? Uh, like a coding language? Yeah. I I didn't really learn a coding language, but. Uh, to be honest, I did a couple of classes. Uh, they were called uh, computer, what was a computer applications class, yeah. Um, we did a lot of uh, MATLAB. I'm not sure if you guys are familiar, but uh, MATLAB is a really useful tool for uh, analysis. Uh, analysis in any, anywhere from, you know, calculating what's one plus one to Calculating results in a, from a test, from any test, like a laboratory test. Um, I also did this other program called R. Um, it's also an analytical tool that uses uh, coding. Um, but now I wish I would have learned beyond that. You know, I was never. I, I like, for example, I like coding, but I was never really in the mindset to keep learning it. Um, but I wish I had been from an early, early age. Excellent. All right, I got a, I got a more technical question from, from a student. What's the difference between a civil and a geotechnical engineer? It's a good question. Uh, a geotechnical engineer mostly deals with soils, foundations uh, of buildings. Um, so it's more of a specific type of engineer. A uh, civil engineer can be anywhere, anything from, uh, I have a list here actually, just to remind me, but anywhere from a structural engineer, uh, transportation engineer, traffic engineer, construction engineer, uh, wastewater engineer, stormwater engineer, utility engineer, land development engineer. So there's a uh, civil engineer is more of a broad term for engineering uh, or a career that uh, embraces all these uh, specific types of engineering. Um, although 
most of the civil engineering um, careers do work with a geotechnical engineer. Uh, for example, me, uh, I'm working in a project, you know, the, as I said, uh, across from the Lund's parking lot. Uh, right now, it's a big hole in the ground. So a soils engineer comes, or soils slash geotechnical engineer uh, would come in as we're constructing the uh, the foundation of the building, and they will take soil samples, uh, analyze it, and make sure there's, uh, for example, good compaction on the soils. Uh, that the soils is not, are not clay. Uh, then we make sure we have a good uh, solid. Uh, foundation or good solid, good soils around a foundation to make it solid. So, nice. Wow, I was actually surprised by that one. I, I never heard of the term geotechnical. So, I, so yeah, you know, a couple of folks have read that, that autobiography. Yeah, it's um, in some, uh, so geotechnical engineer, I believe back in uh, maybe 50 to 100 years ago, it used to be part of civil engineering too or under the same umbrella. Uh, so it's one of those uh, engineering uh, careers that just branched up in its own. The most recent one is, it would be uh, environmental engineering. Uh, okay. So it used to be under civil engineer and then uh, within the last like 15 years, it has become its own um, its own path. So. I'm gonna change directions here. Um, this, is, this is a question more of a, a cultural personal question. And it's, have your feelings changed being a Spanish speaker from the moment that you arrived here um, into the U.S. from a teenager and then to a working professional? Uh, I would say, I mean, I have always embraced being a Spanish speaker. Um, there was, I mean, uh, in high school it was, I think it was fine. Uh, there were some people that I could relate to, but not as many as I would have liked to. Uh, and when I got to college, I, I would realize that there are tons of people like me that are Spanish speakers. And I think I met most of my friends and most of my Korean friends in, uh, during college. Um, you can find any type of uh, person that you want in, uh, in college. You just got to look for them you know it's you you gotta like if you like uh anything you will find us the people that assimilate to you or similar to you so would you consider language for you when you got into a more technical field would you consider it i should say speaking spanish what is it more of a barrier for you or was it more now of a asset like more of that if, you know you know i'm asking mm -hmm. okay. uh i would say right now it's it, it's an asset absolutely it's uh it's really helpful uh right now working in uh, construction engineer or construction management um a lot of our laborers and uh subcontractors are spanish speakers so just having the you know the ability to speak spanish uh it's it helps a lot to uh you know for safety and direction um in my right out of college when i started as a just design engineer. Um, it was really not an asset. Um, it wasn't hindering anything either. It's, it was just, it, I, I was not using any Spanish. Um, I mean, my first job, I wasn't really even talking to anyone. It was just computer, you know, 10, 12 hours a day, designing AutoCAD. AutoCAD. Uh, yeah, AutoCAD, <laughs> it was, <laughs> it's a, uh, I think it was like really helpful for me to understand and learn, but it was AutoCAD is not this. It shouldn't be like anyone's life. It's uh, I want for example, I wanted something else rather than just computer work. So I right. decided construction management was a better, better deal. So now, so we got about three minutes. So I think we got time for just one more question. And actually, sure. it's more of a more of a, um, asking a favor from you. What advice would you give to all students of Ridgefield, um, Hispanic students of Ridgefield, students interested in STEM? What, what advice can you give to them all today? I would say a couple of things. Uh, 
definitely uh, take the harder classes that you can in high school. Uh, never sell, ne never sell yourself short. So if you think you can do it, but you're not sure, just do it. Take it, take that class, especially college. Uh, what is it? Uh, college in the school classes, uh, AP classes, and uh, if you can, uh, what is that other program called where you go to college while in school? Um, PSEO, I think it's called. Yep. I, I would say, you know, if you can do any of those options, it's uh, it's really good to have. It will lessen your workload in uh, in college. Um, but yeah, again, never sell yourself short. Uh, if you think you can do it, or even if, even if you can't, if you even if you think you can't do it, just do it. Just try it. Uh, it'll more than likely work out. Um, and I guess professionally too, as a second thing. Um, create a LinkedIn. A LinkedIn is something that will op open doors for you um, when you get to college uh, for you to, and then you'll be able to more easily get a internship that will in the long term help your career. So. Excellent. I will, I will add LinkedIn into my classes to teach my kiddos. And even think of that. It's a great point. Yeah, I, rec I highly recommend it. So. Well, Nelson, we've only got a couple seconds left. I can't thank you enough for joining us and helping our, our, our kiddos and, and giving them some real life uh, information. Thank you for sharing with us. Yeah, thank you, Matt. Right. Have a great day. You guys as well. All right. Bye now.